So I'm, I'm greatly delighted to be standing here with Sam from One Green World. And Sam, today we're going to be talking about specific plants because you guys carry such a wonderful, not only of unique plants, but wonderful edible plants. But we're going to be talking about plants that came from Chile, right? Correct. So I'm going to jump right in and I'll, I'll cut in when I have a question or seven. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> So, so tell me about this one, because it looks familiar to me. Yeah, you've probably seen these not at this size, but at gargantuan size all over Portland, because we have 100-year-old specimens all over the place. Uh, and what we call it is the monkey puzzle here right. in North America. In South America, they call it araucaria. Right. And not a lot of people know this, because we often just plant lone specimens, uh, but they actually produce a really delicious edible starchy nut. Really? Yeah, but the thing is you have to have male and female trees in order to get pollination. And we all grow seedlings here. We don't know what they are. People don't plant enough of them, so we hardly ever get. So you never actually get that. that and they, they use that in Chile. To this food. day, they still wow. harvest and eat araucaria, and that's like crazy. Wow, yeah. interesting, interesting. Yeah, they're a, they're a wonderful plant, but they, they have a spine. I mean, they, they can be pokey. They have a spine, <laughs> but give it 30 years or so, and then the spines will all be And then it'll be way up high. <laughs> all right, and you won't perfect. run into them. And what's this one sitting down there? This by you? is a really cute little guy called Chilean guava. And guava oh, is sort of just a yeah. loose term for anything in the myrtle family that makes a good fruit. Um, this is a selection from Jim Gerdeman's garden uh -huh. in Southern Oregon. And they're really sweet little evergreen plants. The flowers smell amazing. We realized this year when they were all in flower, we were like, what is that? And then they make these little, not quite ripe yet fruits. Adorable. And then do, what color do they turn when they're ripe? Uh, it's a more dark red. Dark red. And so, then how big does this shrub get? You know, is this it like one, this particular form usually tops out at three or four feet. Oh, so not a massive I've seen plant them then. in South America get up six, eight, sort of like a high bush blueberry. Right, right. But it tastes pretty small. Wonderful, wonderful. And then uh, there's one down on the ground kind of in the back here. I'll step aside so Jeff can see it. But tell me about this because I'm really intrigued by this plant. This is an elusive and one of our all time favorite Chilean plants called the Chilean hazelnut and not a true hazelnut. It's actually more closely related to the macadamia nut wow. in the Proteaceae family. Oh, so proteas. Yes. Which are a great florist flower. They're, and the flowers <laughs> on these are amazing too. They use wonderful. the foliage uh, in cut flower arrangements and it's really, really hard to grow. <laughs> and so, <laughs> well, we, okay, at least you're honest about that. Yeah. But if you can grow it then, is the, is the nut then again, what is edible from this? The nut is this? amazing on it, yeah. And, and is there, what, what is the flavor of them? Why, why do they like them? It's, it's got that whole high uh, oil content, kind of like okay. a macadamia okay. nut. Okay, right, right. And they're really tasty. We might have some we can eat. Oh, in the fridge I, I wouldn't say no to that. We'd be eating some of our seed stock. But so even if they, that they might be frustrating for, for growers here, you're certainly more than willing when people come in and might to get all the answers for how they can do it best here. Yeah, the porridge has to be just right for right, these ones. Right. Not too hot, not too cold. Right, right soil conditions. <laughs> We've planted this one in the shade of this Luma because it wants this sort of dappled shade, forest uh -huh. edge kind of thing. So once you know what it requires to really work here, you'll be able to share that with everybody then. Correct. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, speaking of this plant, the Luma, tell me about this and what is it that we would eat off of it in Chile? This one is called Luma apiculata, and you can see the little berries just starting to form. Right, right. It's one of the many amazing Chilean myrtles that are down there, and this one, Similar to the Chilean guava, makes a berry. You can even see the resemblance in well, the fruit. Well, it's interesting to me how many of the myrtle family plants, because we can grow myrtles here mm -hmm. in Oregon, how many, especially in Chile, then obviously they use for edible purposes. Yeah, for as edible well. purposes. They make a really delicious wine out of this. Oh, wonderful. And wonderful. people use it as like a cheesecake topping. And wow. this is a clone we found that is particularly hardy. And, and, and thrives right here. Yeah, never a burned leaf on it. Well, you know, every time we come out and chat with Sam about different products that they sell here, we are always delighted to get even more information that we're completely unaware of as well. So if you're thinking, I want to try this stuff, uh, go to gardentime.tv, we'll click over their website, come out, chat with them, and buy some wonderful, unique Chilean plants for your own garden. Sam, my friend, thank you so much. Thanks for coming out.